Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to do another PLC quiz based off of a really popular pump setup called a lead lag setup. This question comes from the old fart who commented in one of my PLC sequence videos asking, have you done more complex videos on multi-pump rotating lead lag kind of sequencer? It would tie into this and is frequently asked in some of the forums. Now, if you don't know the old fart, he is in a lot of the uh, control forums and he's a great contributor. And I thought this would make a really good quiz. The way a basic lead lag setup works is you have two pumps and you'll have at least three floats. So we'll start with three floats because that's going to be the most basic one is we're going to have a stop float. We're going to have a lead float and we're going to have a lag float. So we have a tank and it starts filling up with water and the water goes above the stop float, nothing's going to happen. And then it goes above the lead float and one of your pumps is going to turn on and that'll hopefully start pumping it down to that stop float. And if it gets below the stop float, it'll turn back off. Now, if it couldn't keep up, it would continue rising. And when it hits the lag float, both pumps will turn on and hopefully that will continue pumping it down. And when it hits the stop float, both pumps will turn off. Now there's also two additional floats that are on a lot of these. You have a low alarm float and a high alarm float. And usually the low alarm float and the stop float are both interlocked with the two pumps and the high alarm will run both pumps and alarm. So for this one, I am using a prototype PLC trainer, but any PLC trainer will work. Mainly I have a full class of students this week and all my normal video trainers are tied up on other fun projects. But let's talk about the IO assignments that I have first. For my inputs, I have input zero as my low alarm float. I have input one as my stop float. I have input two as my lead float. Input three as my lag float. I have input four as my high alarm float. And then I have input eight as an alarm silence. And then for my outputs, output zero is pump one. Output one is pump two. Output two is going to be an alarm light and output three is going to be an alarm buzzer. Now on my trainer to represent these, I have the green light or light one, that's going to be pump one. I have the yellow light or light two, that's going to be pump two. Light three or a red light, that's going to be our alarm light. And you're going to have to use your imagination for my buzzer because I looked around and I didn't have one. Our blue light or light four, that's going to be our alarm buzzer. We'll talk about our alarms in a second, but let's talk about how this will work as far as the lead lag part goes. So I have these in order, low float, stop float, lead float, lag float, high float. So our water will start filling up and first we're going to get our low float. So notice our alarm does go out. Then we're gonna get our stop float. Now notice there's no action when we go over the stop float. So it goes on, no pumps turn on. All right, now our lead pump is gonna come on. And this time it is pump one. And we hope at that point, the one pump will be able to draw our water level back down. So it goes back below that lead float, but the pump is gonna continue running until we get to the stop float. It's the stop float, pump shuts off. Starts filling with water again. Stop float comes back up. And now we're back on a lead pump. Now remember last time it was our green light. This time it's gonna be our yellow light or pump two. And again, we hope that single pump can hold out. It drops back down. We're still gonna wait till we get back to our stop float. And then we'll fill it up again. Let's do that one more time just so you see when this lead comes on this time, it is gonna be the green light. Now let's say it can't keep up. So it's gonna keep filling and at this point, we're going to pinning our lag float. And at that point, both pumps should come on. So it does. And now we have pump one and pump two on. Now it starts drawing back down like it should. So we drop the lag float out. But notice they both stay on. They're going to stay on until the stop float. So then our lead float goes down. And then finally our stop float goes down. And that's when our pumps will shut off. All right, now let's talk about our alarm conditions. First, we can't keep up. So... Stop float comes up, lead float comes up, lag float comes up, and finally we have that high alarm float, and it comes up. So a couple things about it is first it does turn on our alarm light and our alarm buzzer. 
Well, when you're there working on it, you don't have to hear the buzzer working all the time because that's how we end up with buzzers getting unwired. So we need a silence. And I've set the blue button up here as our silence. So I press it and that's gonna silence my alarm. And hopefully I can fix my issue. And this will stay silenced until the alarms are cleared and it sees another occurrence. So if I drop off of my high float, one, my alarm light goes out, it comes back up again, we're gonna get that alarm silence again. So we'll reset that. And then we could have the tank emptying all the way. So let's say we had a hole in the bottom of the tank, it drops down, our red light is gonna be on again. Now just to distinguish this, and yes, I know somebody's gonna post, why wouldn't you use an HMI? Well, there's only two alarms and this is a programming quiz to help us learn how to do programming, is if you have a low float, make the alarm flash one second on, one second off. Now if we had the high float, which was this one, make the alarm solid. And same thing both ways, you notice down here, we had our alarm buzzer, we press the silence, and it does silence the alarm. And notice we still flash our light, but our alarm buzzer is not coming back on. All right, a few other little holes that are in this, and really some of these are discretion. Sometimes your alarm high float and low float are simply informational. They don't actually do anything, but a lot of times they do. So we don't want the pump to be able to run if this low float is off. So like right now, my low float is off. Let's say that float goes bad and we just come up on our stop float. One, we still have an alarm because our low float is not on. We can silence that. But all right, now typically when we hit our lead, one of these two should come on, but it's not going to because we want to protect the pump with this. Same with the lag, it's not going to come on. And same with the high, it's not going to come on. That is our kind of our fail safe to make sure we don't burn up our very expensive pumps. Now let's go up through another scenario. Let's say that our low float is good and we have our stop float. Now, for some reason, these lead and lag, either they get tangled or they both happen to be bad. When you switch the high float on, it should kick both pumps on. And you switch it off, it will keep going until we hit the stop float. So absolutely positively to run, we must have our low float on and our stop float on. And then our lead float will turn on one, and it'll alternate each time. Also, if it keeps going up, the second one will come on. And let's just say for some reason that our lead and our lag are not working, the high float should still operate our system and let it pump back down to either the stop or the low alarm float. So I think this will make a good challenge. I look forward to seeing what all you come up with. Also, I do have Switch 4 wired to select between programming languages again. So switch four to the left, that is gonna make this run in ladder logic. Switch four in the middle, that is gonna make this run in function blocks. And switch four to the right, we're gonna run this in structured text. Hopefully that keeps the people that just wanted to shout what language you should program quiet. And we did have a few other issues with the last programming quiz. Is first, some people were upset that there wasn't an immediate answer. And there's not gonna be an immediate answer on this one. I'm posting this one Monday, and I'm hoping to post the answer on Friday, but I don't actually have the video recorded for the answer explaining how it works yet. And I have a full PLC class this week. I have a couple of control panels that I need to get parts moving on so we can build next week. And also I'm hoping to do a podcast this week because I haven't done a podcast near in nearly a month. So I'm going to try to do it Friday. It may end up happening over the weekend, just depending on how things go. And there were a few people that were upset that the answer wasn't perfectly set on a silver platter for them and they had to go hunt for it. So let me show you how you go hunt for this. We're going to open up a new tab and we're going to type youtube.com and then up at the top in the search bar type Tim W-I-L-B-O-R-N-E, or if you can't spell my last name, a lot of people can't, just type T-W controls. Hit enter, and right here at the beginning, you're gonna see our channel, and very conveniently, here's our subscribe thing. Just click that subscribe, and after that, click the bell thing here, and select all for notifications. And then, you will not have to hunt for the answer. You will get it on your silver platter that you're looking on. So right at the top here, you can see all the recent uploads. And in that case, here was one of the last quiz answers. And probably shortly back, 
Here was another quiz answer. So please do not comment saying you did not get an answer to the question. I am looking forward to your solutions to this because there are many different ways to do it, especially the alternating part. There must be probably a hundred different ways to alternate pumps and, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber with TW Controls. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like these. When you're ready for some intense training, check out our PLC lab. And if our videos have helped you out, but you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.